everybody, welcome to Whiskey Whistle. I'm the host of the show, Mark, and you're watching Whiskey Review number 198, the Yamazaki Distillery Edition, right here on Whiskey Whistle. Now, I'm not going to be opening this bottle up. This one I got right in Japan from the distillery. If you end up going to Japan, you go to Osaka or to Kyoto, make sure you visit the Yamazaki Distillery. They've got a fantastic tour. Not only that, they also have a great whiskey shop, and even more, they have a fantastic whiskey bar. So uh, make sure you check it out, and if you do, let me know. I'd love to hear about that. Now, instead of opening up that brand new bottle, I'm going to uh, use the last, well, that's, that's a pretty big dram there, but then I'm going to use the last dram out of this little mini bottle, also which was purchased in Japan as a gift for me uh, from the owners of a dog cafe in Osaka, actually. And... Uh, Misato, I think that's the um, uh, the owner's name. She and her family own the business. Uh, if you're watching, please thank your mother one more time uh, for getting this wonderful bottle of Yamazaki for me. I had a great time at your cafe. Uh, loved all those highballs and also the sake and the uh, Japanese shochu. Fantastic. Say hi to your dad too. Uh, all right, well, interestingly, I just opened this. It's a tiny little bottle. There's not much left in here. I can already smell the fragrant whiskey within this bottle. So I'll get this poured and I'm going to pour it into a very special glass. Let me get it poured first. Here we go. Should we go all in? Let's go all in. Yep. I can smell it even more now. So that's the last, that's a good 35 milliliters from that one, I would say. Set that back behind here. I've got a lot of things on my little makeshift table. We'll talk about that in a minute. Right, let me bring that glass nice and close for you. There, can you see the, the label there on the front? It says Yamazaki Distillery. And this is in fact uh, the nosing glass that the master distiller, uh, the master blender, I should say, the master blender whose name is uh, Shinji Fukuyo. So Shinji Fukuyo, uh, he would use these glasses uh, in order to smell and taste all the different whiskeys from different casks when he blends them together to, to make his craft. So, oh, and he's been doing that, I think, since 2009. Is that right? 2009, yeah. So he's held that position since 2009, since which time there have been uh, just a whole host of awards for the distillery, including uh, Best Whiskey of the Year, which I think was, um, boy, was it 2014? I think it was a 2013 Sherry Cask uh, was the world's best uh, winner. Now, you'll also notice a couple of other things here on the, uh, the table. Uh, this is one that I've already uh, done a little mini, um, we'll call it a unboxing event. So if you look back in the videos, uh, you'll find a, a recorded live video of the unboxing of this guy. Now, um, this has no English on the front, but uh, the Chinese characters uh, would say Yamazaki. Um, so that would mean uh, Zaki Mountain, okay? Uh, so Yamazaki Distillery, I believe, is what that means on the front there. And this is a distillery exclusive bottling. And uh, apparently it is, I think, 8 to 10 years old. And in case you missed that, that's bottle number. I think it's not just the bottle number. I think that's actually the, uh, the cask number. Uh, I could be wrong, or at least it's the blending number. So this is 337174. All right, so we're going to pour a little bit of this one, not as much as that. That's about all I need, I think. Okay, that's about 20 milliliters. More than enough to do the review. So we'll set it there. But wait, there's more. <laughs> all right, now, first of all, I've got to get myself comfortable here. Um, I've got this great suit jacket. I've also got the pants, but they don't fit right now. Uh, I'm going to change that up pretty soon. Anyway, get myself comfortable here. It's a good suit where you can unbutton the sleeve. 
And if you get custom suits, make sure you ask for that. It's a little bit more, but it'll come in handy if you live anywhere where the summers are hot. All right. And I've got my air conditioner turned on to the lowest setting. Uh, there we go. So that I can, uh, well, so that it doesn't make such a loud noise, but it's getting slightly warm in here. It's already 27 in this apartment, apparently. All right, now, uh, other cool things. I'm going to put this on. Let me open it so you can see what's it going to be. Uh, now, need I mention that we're getting up and close to the 200th review? Now, it's certainly not my 200th uh, video. Uh, boy, I, I must be somewhere around 240 or so by now, I would guess. 230, something like that. There we go. All right. So, let me bring that up and close for you. Here. There it is. Can you see it? It's a little Yamazaki 12-year-old bottle. And it's a pin, and it's going to go on my lapel. That's why I wore the jacket today. There. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Now, that's not the only one I've got here. Should I reveal the other one right now? I might as well. Uh, the other one is... Well, I think it's supposed to be the founder. You see, uh, Suntory, as you may call it, um, which... In fact, I believe it's actually pronounced uh, Santori. And uh, the Tori part is uh, somebody's name. And that's the name of the founder of the Yamazaki distillery. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> His name was Shinjiro Tori. So the Tori part comes from the founder's name of San, uh, Santori. Santori. Now, uh, I talked about him in my very first Yamazaki uh, review, which was the 12-year-old, quite some time ago. Anyway, this is the image of uh, Tori, or Tori uh, would be the Japanese pronunciation, Tori, uh, also in uh, Korean. And um, let me show you this bottle. Uh, this is from my friend Sehun, who joined me for three live reviews in Japan. Uh, and this is Tori's, uh, what does it say? Extra. Tori's Extra Whiskey. So Tori's was actually the first name of their whiskey. Um, and uh, then they changed to Sun Tori. Uh, and they didn't have any single malt on, on the, uh, uh, let's say, produced for commercial selling. Uh, can't speak right now anyway. Uh, they didn't produce any any bottles of of single malt until 1984, uh, at least that were exported. I'm guessing there must have been some probably like anniversary or special bottlings for friends and whatnot. I'm guessing. Um, anyway, so that is a blended Japanese whiskey, and uh, we're gonna get into that too today. Now, um, I say today. Of course, that may actually be the next review. I'm going to review uh, the Yamazaki Distillery Edition by itself. Uh, then I'll get on to the distillery only uh, bottling. And then after that, for part of the next uh, review, so it'll be 199, uh, then I'm also going to talk about some blended uh, Japanese whiskeys from Suntory. So this one. And also. I guess it would be the most famous Japanese blended whiskey there is, and that is uh, the uh, namesake Suntory whiskey. And the bottle that goes by the name of, I think it's uh, Kakubin, um, which has to do with the shape of it being square, uh, and also, I think, also the fact that it kind of looks like a tortoise shell. Uh, anyway. So we're going to get into those, and uh, and then we're going to I'm going to end up I'm going to close the series uh, with the making of um, a, a excellent Japanese highball. We'll try uh, we'll try one. We might try two. Who knows? Okay. All right. So I'm going to put uh, 
Shinjiro Tori on my lapel as well. Where should I put him? Get it nice and close together. You're going to join me for some whiskey reviews. All right, let's get going now. Uh, first of all, Yamazaki Distillers Reserve. We didn't talk about the color also. Um, you're looking at basically a... It's getting into the Indian gold type of a color as I rustle that paper around. Sorry about that. All right, so there's the color for that one. Um, no mention of whether it's natural in color. I'm guessing that it probably is. I think the Mizunata Oak... Um, Mizunata Oak Aged Whiskey will have a lot of color in it. So they can use that to make sure that they get the color they want. Like many uh, distilleries in Scotland though, they may have to use a little bit of colorant, a little bit of, um, what is that called, E150A, uh, just to hit the same color every time. But um, there is nothing on the nose or nothing on the palate that tells me that it's in there. So if there is any in there, it's just very, very small, very, very minimal amount. Let's get on to the nose, and before that, we'll have a short word from the YouTube sponsors right here. Welcome back, Yamazaki Distillery Edition. The nose. My first scent, the first scents that I'm getting from this are the wood influence. And there's that distinct uh, Mizunara, uh, Mizunara smell um, coming from the Mizunara uh, aged, Mizunara, that's Japanese oak, Japanese oak aged Yamazaki. And that's probably the minority component in here. And uh, as I learned from uh, a website called the Master of Malt, I learn a little bit more about the um, uh, the different kinds of casks that go into this. Released in spring 2014, this is one of two distillers reserve single malt whiskies from Suntory in Japan. And don't forget, that's pronounced Suntory, I believe. Uh, this single malt from the Yamazaki distillery is jam-packed with superb red berry notes, gained from the whiskey being matured in Bordeaux wine casks, all right, so Bordeaux wine casks are involved here, and sherry casks. It also features malt matured in Mizunara casks, adding subtle fragrant oak notes. Uh, and I have a feeling that there may also be, uh, there might may also be some bourbon matured uh, Yamazaki in here as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but that would be my guess. This doesn't come off as a sherry monster. Uh, it doesn't come off as a, uh, like an, uh, an oaky beast, kind of like a um, virgin oak matured um, a scotch kind of thing. Okay, um, so the Mijanara oak, um, it's there. It's, it's a little bit on the subtle side, but still quite prominent. Uh, the sherry and the Bordeaux, well, you won't smell it at first, but as you continue to smell and take in the fragrance, your nose gets a little bit used to that oakiness and you're going to find something kind of like an empty red wine glass. It's also very malty. And not only that, it's also a little bit peaty. Um, so Yamazaki is peated to some degree. Uh, I think Hakushu is a little bit more peated than Yamazaki. Uh, but what I would notice about this one in comparison with the 12 year old on the nose is that it seems like there's a little bit more peat involved uh, now than there was with the 12 year old. And I think, I see, I think what they want is basically they want to keep the quality. So quality meaning the quality of taste uh, not meaning quality meaning the age of the whiskey okay so there's two competing thoughts here 
So they've got their great 12 year old, um, which stands by itself and uh, probably one of the top 12 year olds in the world, quite possibly. So no doubt it's got some quality and a lot of the quality comes from age. So if they're going to put out an uh, NAS, a no age stated whiskey, obviously it's going to be less than 12 years old. It's probably a mix of I'm guessing eight, eight to 12 year old whiskeys, maybe a little bit of older ones in there too. So you're putting in eight year old whiskey and you want to keep the quality so you can spend more money on uh, the cask or maybe you can spend more money on uh, the barley and um, maybe getting some peated barley in there uh, or using a slightly different um, heart of uh, the uh, the distillate as it comes out can also influence uh, quality of flavor. So I mean, I'm kind of talking through my butt here, but I think there must be some valid validity in there in that uh, it's a great whiskey. It's obviously less expensive, but uh, it stands up, uh, it holds its own, and uh, and I quite like it. So let's get on to that then. All right, so I talked a little bit about the oak and a little bit of that wininess. Now let's look at uh, my notes here. A little bit of earthy peat, empty wine glass, some savory spices in there. So it's not just your cinnamon. Um, there's a bit of nutmeg also. But also kind of a mintiness. Um, I don't know if I can just go out and say tarragon, but there's something a little bit herbal in there. And the more I smell it, I get grain crackers. Um, for fruits, for me anyway, I'm getting some dragon fruit, which is quite mild, but has a distinct scent. And also uh, grilled grapefruit. With a little bit of that um, seared effect on the top of it. Mm -hmm. And I can also smell the young content. So it's got that familiar sort of a effervescent fizziness to it. And I can kind of expect it's going to come in the palate as well. But because it's not alone there, it's well dressed with some older whiskeys and uh, having that breadth of ages seems to really give it a very interesting scent. All right, let's get on to the palette for the Yamazaki Distillery Edition. Cheers, everybody. Mmm. 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 Interestingly, as this is the last dram from that bottle, it's had a, a good amount of time to um, oxidize, to get a bit of air. Uh, it's been open for about three weeks, and um, uh, with the, you know, nearly empty for the last week or so. So, really does well with that oxidation Oxidization, oxidization going on. Oxidation? <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh, mm. Now it's still very oak forward. There's also a lot of fruit coming through here. I write here big Mizunara uh, influence. Uh, and my light's going crazy. I'm gonna have to cut that out um, for the next review for sure. Uh, something like papaya, something like soft persimmon developing. There's a burst of a vanilla coconut uh, and a lick of peat still there in the palette. Let me get that light shut off now. All right, hopefully that's still bright enough. Sorry about that. I've got to get something rewired here. I don't know what's going on. Uh, right, so that was the palette. There's still a bit of peat, this vanilla coconut, um, some nice fruits like papaya, a little bit of soft persimmon, and still a nice oaky, that Japanese oak flavor coming through as well. And the finish, a 
some musk melon, vanilla, and um, something kind of like a sweet durian. Durian, that, uh, that fruit from Southeast Asia that looks spiky. It's really big and it's white inside, very pulpy. Uh, you kind of eat it like ice cream. And uh, it comes across as creamy and sweet and yet also quite savory, kind of like um, caramelized onions added into that ice cream. Anyway, seriously. Uh, all right, and uh, let's get on to this with water now. I'm going to add just a little bit of water, not too much. Probably got that down to right around 40%, I would guess. And uh, what I notice with water... I still notice that empty wine glass. Kind of a berry fruitiness, strawberries, mm. it's quite nice, a um, little bit less so than in the, uh, in, in the neat whiskey, but still there. The peat is also still present. Um, the smell seems a little bit drier than before. All right, so let's get on to the palate. Cheers, everybody. Mm. It's a little bit drier, a little bit more wine. Um, again, uh, not a really sweet red wine, a medium red wine. That fruitiness that you get, kind of like plums, kind of like some uh, nice red cherries, some strawberry. So good red fruits coming through there. Um, is this the sherry cask talking or the Bordeaux or a mix of both? I guess so. I don't know. Uh, the peat seems a little bit more noticeable um, on the palate with water added. And the finish? Hmm. Well, it's pretty long. And I've still got... Uh, the those red fruits are still there. Musk melon is still there. Vanilla, absolutely. The durian, still in there too. Quite nice and pretty long. A nice long finish for an NAS whiskey, and that is something to applaud uh, the distillery for. Good job with this one. All right, let's get on to the whiskey whistle whiskey score for the Yamazaki Distillers Reserve. Before that, we'll have a short word from the YouTube sponsors right here. All right, everyone. Uh, so the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for the Yamazaki Distillers Reserve is going to be 86 out of 100. 86 out of 100. That's the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for the Yamazaki Distillers Reserve. Now, what do I write here? Uh, this is very, very good stuff. Uh, it's also an excellent price, except for Korea. Now, I don't know what the price is in Canada if it's available, but it's probably not very good, not very nicely priced in Canada also, especially uh, for the provinces that have a local government-run uh, liquor board, which means most of them. All right, so in Korea, uh, this is between 125 and 175,000 won. So about $100 US, $110 US, up to $150 US for this bottle. And I paid 45, um, 40, 4,500 Japanese yen for this. So I think that's round about $45. Um, anyway, at that price, it's amazing. Now, it's got a little bit more peat than the 12-year-old. And I wrote here in question marks, is this a mix of eight? 10, 12, and 14 year old casks? I don't know, but that's how it seems to me. It's got a nice bit of age, and yet it's got a little bit of a young punch to it, which is nice. All right, so 86 out of 100, that's the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Yamazaki Distillers Reserve. So, hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe to Whiskey Whistle right over here.
uh, in this area you'll see that that button there it's kind of pink and yellow click on that one you'll be subscribed don't forget about my Twitter account my Instagram account and also most importantly the Facebook page for Whiskey Whistle please please like it uh, please put up your photos of your collection tell me what you're drinking of late I'd love to hear from you all right now stay tuned for the next one that's gonna be the uh, Yamazaki distillery only distillery only bottle from the Yamazaki distillery all right take care everyone we'll see you for the next one goodbye こんにちは。私はトリーです。